All right, so we knew pretty much immediately once the initial COVID stimulus bills at the beginning of the pandemic were signed into law that they were effectively going to be gigantic corporate slush funds for the wealthiest people and corporations in the United States. While simultaneously you had unnecessary austerity being imposed on working class people and we are over time just getting more and more of an idea of exactly how far the depths of this corruption and rot uh, actually goes so here from common dreams jake johnson he says nearly two dozen gop states are attempting to use covid relief funds for tax cuts and not just any tax cuts of course unsurprisingly tax cuts for the wealthiest people and corporations in their various states so a little bit of details here. They say Republican leaders in nearly two dozen U.S. states are attempting, potentially in violation of federal law, to use cor coronavirus relief funds approved by Congress last year to finance tax cuts instead of devoting the money to combating the ongoing pandemic and its economic consequences. And the Washington Post reported on Tuesday that GOP officials are working to subvert a provision in the American Rescue Plan that bars states from using the money from the $350 billion COVID-19 aid program to either directly or indirectly offset a reduction in net tax revenue. And last March, just days after President Joe Biden signed the ARP into law, 13 Republican state attorneys general sued the Biden administration over that provision, decrying it as an unconstitutional assault on state sovereignty. Seems like it's just a basic accountability measure to uh, prevent you guys from using this money from the federal government on uh, tax cuts for will for uh, billionaires and corporations instead of using it on what it was actually be supposed, uh, supposed to be used for. But uh, instead, they're complaining about unconstitutional assault on state sovereignty. Just completely fucking ridiculous. But they continue saying, in the nearly year and a half since the GOP officials filed the suit, numerous Republican states have moved to slash taxes, often in ways that primarily benefit rich households and profitable businesses. And Whitney Tucker of uh, Whitney Tucker and Cody Novak of the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities noted earlier this year that Iowa, one of the states that joined the legal action against the Biden administration, replaced its gradual per or graduated personal income tax with a flat tax of 3.9% while retaining credits and deductions that would allow wealthy Iowans to pay even less. And they say lawmakers in multiple states are pushing deep tax cuts as states see stronger than expected revenues driven largely by the federal government's robust fiscal response to the COVID-19 recession, Tok Tucker and Novak observed. So, I mean, you see what they're doing here. They got excess money because of the money that was coming from the federal government, specifically intended to do things like tackling the pandemic, helping average people deal with uh, some of the inflation and the uh, various complications as a result of the pandemic, the supply chain breakdowns, etc. cetera. Uh, supposed be using it on basically anything that would remotely even be useful uh, to average people within these various states. But uh, as they're pointing out here, instead, they basically took this gigantic influx of cash and just said, oh, this is a perfect time to slash taxes on uh, where the disproportionate of amount of wealth exists in this country in the hands of the wealthiest billionaires and corporations. We're going to give them a tax cut and subsidize that tax cut uh, with this money that was supposed to be going towards helping average people. So again, just complete fucking insane conservative ghouls here. But they continue with another quote saying, Iowa, Mississippi, South Carolina, and West Virginia are also pushing for income tax cuts that would deliver outside gains to wealthy residents and profitable corporations. Uh, and finally, we finish off here from a uh, quote from the actual Washington Post article saying, more than a year after Congress approved a $1.9 trillion COVID uh, relief package, Republicans in nearly two dozen states have ratcheted up efforts to tap some of those funds for an unrelated purpose, paying for tax cuts. The moves have threatened to siphon off aid that might otherwise help states fight the pandemic, shore up their local economies, or prepare for a potential recession. So again, Nothing surprising here. This is the entirety of what the Republican Party, what conservative uh, capitalist economics stands for. They stand for deregulation of corporate America. They stand for uh, tax cuts and handouts to billionaires and corporations, while simultaneously using this lack of funds as a justification to impose austerity on working class people to slash uh, welfare spending in all of these various states. So, I mean, it's really the same exact tricks that we have seen from conservatives and from many conservative liberals uh, for decades in this country. 
country. I mean, this is basically just neoliberal economics, but uh, it's, again, nothing surprising there. And also, it's coming at a time uh, where corporations in the United States have seen record profits. So uh, not exactly the time that you would think that these corporations need some sort of help in the form of tax cuts. In fact, if anything, you would use this as an opportunity to justify doing the exact opposite of that and taxing some of these excess profits that uh, corporations and billionaires have been making throughout the pandemic. We know that dudes like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos have uh, you know quadrupled or uh, even more so uh, lifted their personal incomes and personal wealth that they have at their disposal. So, I mean, we've seen billionaires and corporations doing better than at almost any point in uh, modern American history. And what is the response to that from the Republican Party? It's to give them even more money while slashing a lot of that spending that should have been going towards uh, average working class Americans. But again, this is the context of uh, what it looks like to live in a completely dystopian capitalist hellscape, uh, as is the United States. But on top of this, we also know the deeper rot that was within these uh, COVID relief packages. And keep in mind, this isn't just like overlooking the uh, issues here. This wasn't like, oh, we accidentally installed some loopholes that allowed corporations and uh, Republican states to take advantage of this. No, this was basically the idea in terms of how the legis legislation was actually crafted. They wanted it to be used for shit like this. And just as a, another reminder in terms of what corporations have been up to throughout the pandemic, here from the Center for Public Integrity, they say, these companies took $1.8 billion in federal aid to save jobs. They laid off 90,000 workers anyway. And this is just one specific example, but you can apply this across the entire American economy. Basically, the series of events that we had is you had trillions and trillions of dollars that were injected into the economy at the beginning of the COVID pandemic. We had the Federal Reserve that was dumping trillions of dollars to prop up the stock market during that initial crash. They saved the you know Wall Street goons and uh, protected their bottom line while average Americans were suffering. Then they gave trillions of dollars more through legislation to uh, corporate America and the wealthiest people within the country. And then those corporations turned around. They fucked over their workers. They didn't have adequate uh, standards within their workplaces, as we saw like with Chris Smalls and Amazon. He was literally fired because he was protesting unsafe working conditions. And uh, you have gigantic multi-billion dollar corporations who are not treating their workers well, who are uh, laying off workers, even though that was supposed to be something that was uh, preventable within this package. And uh, then you turn around and you have a situation now where the Federal Reserve is going to be stepping in. And instead of addressing any of the corporate corruption, the corporate price gouging that is uh, obviously ongoing within the American economy, they are going to be raising interest rates, which is uh, vastly disproportionately going to affect, again, average working class Americans. I mean, it's just the entire U.S. economy is a giant scam on working people while they serve the interests of uh, the wealthiest people within society. And on top of just uh, taking this money and using it on uh, stock buybacks and dividends for shareholders, they are also giving uh, billions of uh, dollars that were supposed to be intended for COVID relief uh, to police departments and to prisons here within the United States. So keep in mind, we're talking about a roughly $1.9 uh, trillion economic plan in the American Rescue Plan. And uh, as pointed out here from The Appeal, they say during Biden's State of the Union address on March 1st, he said that as much as $350 billion dollars from the American Rescue Plan could be used to fund the police, a line that drew bipartisan applause from members of Congress. And of course it did. Uh, of course it did. But keep in mind, we're talking about $350 billion, okay, out of the $1.9 trillion stimulus, pa stimulus package. So basically you had a situation where they put together these giant packages that were just corporate slush funds and handouts uh, to the police state. I mean, that's essentially what this resulted in. And meanwhile, we have, you know, uh, uh, absolute ghouls like Joe Manchin coming out and saying we can't afford things like the child tax credit, which just as a uh, point of reference here would have cost roughly $125 billion triple that amount is going to the police as a result of the uh, American Rescue Plan. But we have corporate ghouls like Joe Manchin coming out and saying uh, somehow we can't afford $125 billion, $200 billion, whatever it is, to pull millions and millions of American children out of poverty in this country. So again, the lesson here is the same lesson that it seems like we're repeating on a daily basis uh, on this channel. But uh, it remains true that basically the entire American economy, the entire American political apparatus is controlled by the capitalist class. And so it shouldn't be a surprise that you are seeing results here where every piece of legislation is basically just a handout to corporate America. Uh, every single piece of legislation is a handout to the police state, the same exact police that uh, serve the interests of capital as well at a fundamental level. And so, you know, it's no surprise that we're ending up with this type of corruption. But uh, nonetheless, it's a good insight, I guess, a refresher on exactly what Republicans stand for in a moment like this. Uh, they don't support things like the child tax credit. They don't support things like free community college or student debt cancellation or tackling climate change 
or universal health care or lower prescription drug costs uh, or uh, uh, increasing the minimum wage or legalizing marijuana. They don't support any of the most popular provisions within the United States. By the way, one of the single most popular things that was within uh, the Build Back Better plan, which got eviscerated by corporate Democrats and Republicans, was uh, tax hikes on billionaires. That was, I think, literally the single most popular part of the uh, uh, Build Back Better plan that uh, was tanked. So, you know, I mean, you want to talk about who does our government serve? It serves the interests of the billionaire class. It serves the interests of corporate America. And that is a very bipartisan uh, consensus thing that is happening and has been happening for decades in this country. It just so happens that in this story, we have uh, Republican ghouls across a dozen at least uh, states who are now redirecting funds that should have been going to ha helping uh, average people within their states is now going to be going basically towards the police. And uh, on top of that, towards funneling money towards the richest uh, billionaires and corporations in the country.